before the NBA draft even began this past week, trade rumors started popping up about Spurs all-star DeJounte Murray. The most prevalent was reported by Bleacher Report, which indicated the Atlanta Hawks were willing to deal for DeJounte for John Collins and other considerations. But it was those other considerations that didn't sit well with the Hawks. According to the report, the Hawks would have had to include three first-round draft picks. And there's another report now that says those talks are still ongoing. All this did not go unnoticed by Murray, who sent out the reaction on Twitter. Uh-oh, with a popcorn emoji. Hey, what a night for Tech Sports Center and Arena. It was nearly a packed house to see the first title defense of Jesse Bam Rodriguez. And boy, did he put on a great show. Bam Rodriguez, currently the youngest world champion in boxing today. He's proved why he is the champ at super flyweight. Bam faced a fighter that's... 10 years older than he is and a lot more experience in the ring, but it was Rodriguez who controlled the fight from the opening bell. He delivered clean, open shot jabs, power punches over and over again early in the seventh, landed a clean overhead right that sent his opponent to the canvas briefly. That was the beginning of the end. Bam Rodriguez let loose, knowing he had his opponent against the ropes, literally and figuratively. The referee jumped in during the eighth round to stop the fight. Rodriguez wins by technical knockout, defending his WBC Super Flyweight World Championship belt that improves to 16 and 0 with 11 knockouts. It, this means everything to me. Um, you know, I, I fought a really great fighter tonight. It, it wasn't just any title defense. It was one of the four kings of the 115 pound division. And I did it in front of my home crowd, so it can't get any better than this. I, I knew Rungo said he was a little flat footed, so the, the game plan coming in was, you know, move, move my feet. And even Robert, before the fight, he said every, every punch you throw is going to land, and that's what happened. So I felt like his, uh, his power started decreasing in the third round, so that's when, you know, I, I decided to stay in the pocket a little bit more, uh, dig my body shots, and he was fading. He was on his way out already. So that's when I picked it up. Um, I knew he was hurt, and I, I was I was hoping he did. So I was like, I, I need to get this guy out of here already. It was amazing, man. I've never had the support like that in any kind of fight. So to get that to get that support from my own from my own crowd, it means everything to me because every time I step in that ring, I support San Antonio to the fullest. It was crazy. Uh, I, I felt I felt the atmosphere, and I, you know, and I was I wasn't even fighting, so it, it was a, it was. I knew my brother. He was in a make a statement and I knew I knew he was gonna knock him out and that's what he did. I wasn't surprised at all. I, uh, I know my brother has, I know his his work ethic in the gym, I know his talent, I know his skills and it, it didn't surprise me. <laughs> Trainer Robert Garcia flew in from London just the day before Bam's corner for this big title defense. We, I already know what Bam is all about. I know the time that he's got since, since I picked him up from the amateurs, well, since he was 15 years old already going to train camp with me in Riverside, California. He's very talented, you know, the kid's very talented. You know, we, we had a hard time, you know, because he's, you know, he's a small weight division, so a lot of promoters don't really get a lot of uh, uh, interest in signing those those weight divisions. But, uh, you know, we struggled. It was hard to get on fights. You know, we tried it with every promoter out there, and it was hard, but, you know, we're thankful that Eddie Hearn believed in, 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 in me, believed in his talent, and look, now he's got a superstar. All right, so what's next for Bam? Garcia told us that Bam's most likely going to move down to 112 pounds and go for the world title in that weight class. You can read more about the championship fight on the instant replay page of KSET.com. So congratulations. And congratulations to our San Antonio Missions. They clinched a postseason berth with their Friday night win over Wichita. They were on the road. They wanted 11-2, 19 hits, two home runs. That clinched the first half championship status in the Texas League South. That means the missions are in the playoffs for the first time since 2018. San Antonio currently 38-29 and 29 in the standings, and that's worth noting since the missions once lost 10 straight way back. And remember that? They were struggling. We were all like, ooh, what's wrong with the missions? I know it's 10. Now they're a playoff team. Good. Their first half champs. Congratulations. All right, here's a look at the upcoming schedule. Missions are going to be in Midland to take on the Rock Hounds. That series starts tomorrow and goes through Sunday. Wow. Well, congrats yeah. and good luck. Time now, 444 and 78 degrees for now. Take a look at the roads with Trans Guide. There's some, uh, looks like there might be some construction on the side of the road there at I-35 and 306. Stephen Gavassos is going to be here in just a few minutes to let us know exactly what's going on. See some flashing lights right there. Another look at the roads with Trans Guide out there. Still looking at that area there off of I-35 and FM 306. We see those flashing lights, but we're not sure what's going on, if it's an accident. But we'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Uh, despite that, things are moving just slowly. 
If we uh, seem a little giddy this morning, it's, yes. it's because we are. It's exciting. Mike's radar is lit up today. Yeah, yeah and, and it's going to get a workout. I mean, we haven't seen radar again in forever. I had to wipe the cobwebs off it. Um, and it's still going to be hot today, but the next couple of days, it is not going to be as hot. So here's what's going on on radar as of right now. And we've got these uh, few showers and a couple of thunderstorms that are sliding down to the uh, basically to the west at about, oh, maybe 10, 15 miles per hour. So not working their way to the west all that quickly. But as far as uh, when they're going to be making it on in here, this one right there around Schulenburg again, moving to the west at, say, uh, 17 miles per hour. So Flatonia at a, just after 5 o'clock tonight, or 5 o'clock this morning, beg your pardon, tonight we'll be seeing uh, a couple of more of these. And then that little uh, cell right there just to the northeast of Luling does look like it is going to be kind of fizzling out. So this won't be the be all end all as far as rain, but at least it's a good indication, kind of a, a little uh, taste of what's to come later on. So a couple of these showers and thunderstorms left over off to the east later on uh, throughout the rest of the morning. They will be dying down. I think I might be a little, little too confident uh, as far as if they hold together, but there will be one or two of them out there and temperatures will be in the upper 70s, then getting into the 80s this morning. We see sort of a lull in the action, perhaps a, a bit of a leftover shower here or there in the late morning noontime hours, then things fire back up. Now we are still, like I said, going to be very hot today up to 97 degrees. Then temperatures will start to uh, drop off as we get into later on this afternoon, late this afternoon and this evening. So here's the uh, computer model, and this one is not very bullish about holding those showers and thunderstorms together off there to the east which is why I think they, they do start to tail off a little bit. Then things start to fire back up. So early afternoon, a couple of these showers, thunderstorms around here, and then as the afternoon rolls on, things will start to get going more in toward dinner time and then going into this evening as well. Um, most of the rain is going to be yeah, decent shower here or there. Obviously, there's going to be one or two of those where you get a, a pretty good downpour with some of these uh, thunderstorms that do pop up. And this is going to be the situation on into tonight. Then things start to sort of tail off a little bit. Then by later on tomorrow afternoon, they are going to be firing up once again. And we'll see more of these showers and thunderstorms around here. As far as rainfall potential, now this is through Friday evening. We're going to be seeing quarter, half inch of rain, maybe about an inch of rain here in town and then more well off to the east. I'm going to explain why that is coming up because not only do we have this system which is sort of lying down in the area, the, the front that we've been talking about last week and in through the weekend, but there's also a little bit of a low that's going to be coming on in here from the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico to give us few more showers, especially off to the east by later on in the week. So 90 today at noon, a couple of showers still left over. We'll have just one or two of them hanging around this morning and then 97 for a high temperature. So it's still going to be on the hot side. Scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. Look at this couple things to point out on that seven day. What first jumps off the map? Go, Steph. Oh, uh, the rain, the rain, sure. David, for sure. 90s, low 90s. Yeah, that's good too. 90, no hundreds on that, no hundreds. that graphic. So yeah, we are going to be staying on the, the cooler side, uh, rain chances. And then Thursday, Friday, especially off to the east, some very, very good rain chances. Hopefully we get some of that wrap around around here, but we'll continue to watch that system as that moves on in here. So what one, a treat. two, three, four, five days. They have a oh, rain symbol on them. Rain symbol. Mm -hmm. Wow. When's Thank the last you. time we saw that? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Not Mike. a drop buster. You know, not raining everywhere. Right. You know, right, to, right. just to qualify, but you know, low 90s, and we do have that shot at some rain. We'll take it. Yep. Nice. Thank you. It is 451 and 78 degrees. And coming up next, a close call at the weekend box office. But who came out on top? Mavericks or Elvis? Hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. Probably Elvis. As we go to break, let's uh, give you some lottery numbers. Pick three, six, three, five, and the fireball is nine, and daily four, one, six, two, four, fireball is nine. Cash five, two, 11, 12, 16, 18. Lotto, Texas, seven, 10, 23, 34, 46, 47. And your Powerball numbers, six, 12, 20, 27, 32, Powerball four, power play three. Good luck. In this morning's GMA First Look, Danny Bonaducci's medical mystery. I couldn't walk at, at all. I couldn't balance. I couldn't do anything like that. 
the actor who became a household name over 50 years ago as Danny on the Partridge family. Come on, get happy. Now speaking with Good Morning America exclusively about the debilitating symptoms he suffered since April. How did all of this start from the first day just to the height of the struggle? Because she looked really uh, nervous. And uh, she said, you're, you're not saying words. You're not speaking English, which, of course, is preposterous to me. And we called an ambulance and took me to the hospital where I remained for the first five days and remember very little of it. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on Danny Bonaducci's health struggle and his big radio comeback. With your GMA First Look, I'm Zoreen Shah, ABC News Los Angeles. Elvis and Maverick both holding their own at the movies this weekend. Really, this one's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Christopher Watson. Look at the trouble. We likely won't know until later Monday whether Elvis was enough to ground Top Gun Maverick. The former opened with an estimated $30.5 million domestically. Time for first with the Top Gun sequel's fifth weekend gross. Good morning, aviators. Jurassic World Dominion dropped to third in week three. Would you like to see a magic trick? A fourth place debut for the Ethan Hawke thriller, The Black Phone, with a better than expected $23.4 million. Whether it finishes the weekend in first or second, Top Gun Maverick and star Tom Cruise have a lot to celebrate. The film just crossed the $1 billion global gross threshold, the first Tom Cruise movie to do so, in the process, overtaking Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness as the year's top grossing movie on the planet. And happy 56th birthday Monday to Star Wars and Star Trek franchise director J.J. Abrams. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. Time now, 456 and 78 degrees for now. Still coming up on GMSA, a look at what's next following the Supreme Court's ruling that overturned Roe v. Wade. So far, at least eight states have outlawed abortion with more on the way. And do you need to relax? We're going to tell you about a new service that lets you listen to nature sounds all over the world. And Trans got another look. We still got some flashing lights there at 35 and FM 306 northeast of town. Stephen Cavazos is going to be here in just a few minutes to explain what's going on. Traffic is moving, but there's some lights out there flashing. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Four people attacked at a park on the city's southeast side overnight. Details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are starting at 78 degrees, but we are excited about these changes. Ooh, yes, it may be Monday. It is June 27th, but it's an exciting Monday to be alive this morning because rain yes. is on the way. <laughs> yes. How about that? Very good news. I mean, I'll take that on a Monday morning, right, Mike? Oh, yeah, we've got some like hours on radar. Show you that in just a couple of moments here. First of all, yeah, 79 and the dew point 67. So still pretty humid out there. And we also are going to make it up to 97 today. So no triple digits, but still very, very hot. Then we're going to start to see cooler air come on in here. The aquifer did go up four tenths of a foot yesterday. Of course, check with your local municipality as far as your watering restrictions. Mold on the low side. All right, here is what radar is showing right now. We do have a couple of showers and thunderstorms off to the east. Um, whether they continue to hold together as they move on in, obviously, Hallettsville, you're seeing a little bit of uh, this light rain around here and Again, I kind of iffy as to whether they continue to hold together that much as far as working their way all the way in toward uh, I-35 this morning. But this is just one feature. We've got another front which is sort of lying down in the area. That's going to be the focal point for more showers and storms to refire later on this afternoon. So just a couple of those showers this morning, especially off to the east. Hot today, so still we're going to be in the upper 90s as I showed you. Then some uh, scattered storms later on today, 40% chance for some rain today. Same thing tomorrow, only 90 degrees tomorrow. A lot of areas will not get out of the upper 80s tomorrow. And the nice thing is then the rest of the week, we will still have some rain chances. Not the rest of the week, but the rest of the week. Uh, we have some rain chances primarily off to the east. We have a, a low developing in the Gulf of Mexico, which is going to be sliding on in. Like I said, mainly off to the east of our area. 
probably still have a few wraparound showers with that. And again, temperatures the rest of the work week still just in the low 90s. So great looking forecast details. Who's going to see how much rain? Get that all sorted out coming up in just a little bit. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Morning, sir. What's going on? And let's get a look at I-35 at FM 306. We saw this as we went to commercial. Steph had mentioned this earlier as well. We are seeing those flashing lights that still remain out there. You can see it right there on your, on your screen on Transguide. Now, what we're looking at is just some road work that was taking place overnight. Crews should be wrapping up shortly, but keep in mind, there are still several active construction spots, but we first want to talk about some of the crashes we saw earlier. The these have cleared out, so some good news. Loop 1604 southbound near Valley Meadow. We had a crash was reported there. It wasn't causing any issues, but the morning started off a little busy, but thankfully has dwindled down. We had another crash over here off US 90 eastbound at I-35. So anybody that was traveling in from Castroville may have encountered those flashing lights, but thankfully, if your travels are going to take you into the Alamo City in the next few moments, you really won't encounter much of a delay. So let's go ahead and take a look at those travel times because we are green across the board. 28 minutes on I-35. Northbound if you're coming in from Pleasanton and Highway 90 in those eastbound lanes about half an hour to get down to downtown SA 16 minutes on I 35 northbound traveling up from Lytle. So no trouble there, but 35 at FM 306 again flashing lights that we see out there. This is just some of the road work taking place in our area. Make sure to have those phones handy. We have an update on some of those active construction spots coming up in the next few minutes. David Stephanie. Thanks, Steven. San Antonio police say four people were attacked by armed suspects while at a park on the city's southeast side. That happened just before 11 at Pickwell Park. That's near Southeast Military Drive. SAPD says the four friends were just sitting in a vehicle when two suspects approached him, showed guns, demanded cash and property. When the driver of the car tried to drive away, police say the suspect started shooting, hitting a passenger in that vehicle. The driver managed to get to a nearby restaurant to call for help. The gunshot victim taken to the hospital. No word on any arrests so far. New this morning, San Antonio police are looking for those responsible for firing more than 30 shots at a house on the city's west side overnight. It happened around midnight on Aztec Alley near South Zarzamora. Police say someone in a vehicle drove up to the house and started shooting. Two women inside the home were hurt. Police say a woman in her 60s was taken to the hospital in critical condition and a younger woman was taken in serious condition. So far, there are no descriptions of the vehicle or the suspects. This morning, Americans are waking up to the first week without legal abortion in every state. Reactions range from joy to anger following the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. And now, as ABC's J.O. O'Brien reports, there's a new focus of this tense debate. Overnight, a candlelight vigil on the steps of the Supreme Court following a weekend of protests from abortion rights activists after the court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Protesters filling the streets in cities nationwide. My body, my choice. Most demonstrations peaceful, but in Vermont, windows seen smashed at the state house, and in Colorado, a Christian pregnancy center burned. The high court's decision now leaving it up to individual states to regulate abortion. So far, eight states have already outlawed abortion, and 11 no longer have a single clinic performing the procedure. There's confusion, shock, concern. Um, a lot of questions about why care was not available in Arkansas, but it would be available potentially in Illinois, for example. Anti-abortion rights groups celebrating. I'm actually very thrilled uh, after many, many rosaries and a lot of praying. For many, the focus now turning to abortion pills. Recent data shows abortion pills, some mailed to women and taken at home, are being used in more than half of procedures in the U.S. Hours after the court's decision, Attorney General Merrick Garland saying states cannot prohibit the use of the FDA-approved abortion pill, Mifepristone. But in South Dakota, the governor indicating she plans to ban the pill from being mailed to women in her state. I don't believe that the telemedicine abortions are safe for individuals, for women to conduct at home. Other states like Texas, Arkansas and Arizona also working to restrict abortion pills, teeing up a potential clash in court with the Biden administration. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. And back here at home, Uvalde and Parkland, two cities bonded in tragedy. People from Parkland, Florida, were in Uvalde this week weekend handing out 600 life boxes. Now, the purpose is to help people deal with their grief after the Robb Elementary Massacre. Each box contains a Bible, a journal, pen, and other items to let people know they're not alone. Life boxes are separated by age group, and they are available in Spanish and English. 
Health Palacios, Heather, excuse me, Heather Palacios is the founder of the Life Boxes, and she lived near Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in 2018 when 17 people were killed by a 19-year-old shooter. I know what it's like to live in a community where there has been a measurable tragedy, and I can't fix anything but I can do something small for anybody on the cusp of wanting to give up. And we're told any boxes not picked up will be left with businesses in the community so they can be handed out to anyone in need. 150 people in New Braunfels will soon be without a job after the announcement of the Coleman plant closure there. Plant officials say they are working with New Braunfels Chamber of Commerce to help the laid off employees find new jobs. The closure was reported by the New Braunfels Harold Zaitong. 47 employees will lose their jobs at the end of August, 55 more at the end of October and the rest in early December. The plant will stop production in October and consolidate business operations to their other location in Kansas. The plant has been operating here for 40 years. And San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a suspect who they say robbed a Dollar General store on Pleasanton Road. This happened back on June 18th and around 530 that evening. The suspect entered the store, grabbed some CDs from a display case and tried to exit the store without paying. When an employee tried to stop him, the suspect slapped the employee and got away. Police say the suspect is known to have shoplifted in the past. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210 Two two four. Stop. You could get a reward of up to five thousand dollars. It is now five oh eight and seventy seven degrees. And still ahead, a first look at a bunch of new devices that Apple is expected to release very soon. And also coming up next, parents in San Antonio taking advantage of the new COVID vaccine available for younger children. An exciting time <laughs> for a Monday. We are expecting rain. I mean, no rain on this shot yet. So something we are looking forward to and we'll be talking to Mike very soon. Some local parents taking advantage of the FDA and CDC recommendation to get younger children a COVID vaccine. This weekend was one of the first opportunities for organizations like University Health and their appointments booked up quick. Two women we spoke to say they wanted to take advantage since the first day of school is just around the corner and they say getting their kids added protection against COVID gives them a sense of relief. We told him um, that it was something to help his body strong and that we would get donuts afterwards and <laughs> he took it really, really well. So being premature, we wanted to jump on the opportunity as soon as possible. They look at them. They're off and running like if nothing happened. You ready? Doctors say the dose of the vaccine is about a third of what older kids get and because of the lower doses, the younger age group is going to get a series of three shots. Oh. For kiddos. They're tough though. Look at them. They yeah. Have them running around like, yeah, I can handle this. No big deal. That's true. The parents are crying, but the kids aren't. <laughs> That's very true. 5, 13, 77 degrees. And still ahead, how a popular video game company is doing more to combat disruptive behavior within its games. And we're going to tell you about a service that lets you listen to nature sounds from all over the world. Tough messes can take more time than you have. But Mr. Clean Clean Freak delivers the power of a deep clean in minutes. Unlike bleach spray, Clean Freak starts deep cleaning on contact with three times the cleaning power to break down tough messes in seconds. It quickly cleans your home's toughest messes. So for a deep clean in minutes, get Mr. Clean Clean Freak. Available in easy to switch refills. Get the cleaning power of Mr. Clean in a wipe to kill 99% of bacteria and viruses. Keep life zesty with Zantac 360 Degrees. Heartburn can't stop this party because Zantac 360's triple action prevents, relieves, and lasts, working in as little as 15 minutes. Keep life zesty with Zantac 360. No. Come on, him. I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker and is two times more absorbent so you can use less. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. And welcome back. It is 517. Apple reportedly preparing to launch a flood of new devices this fall. ABC's Rihanna and Ali has the details of today's Tech Bites. 
In today's Tech Bites, Apple is reportedly on the verge of launching a flood of new devices. Starting this fall, we can expect to see four new iPhone 14s, a trio of updated Apple Watches, and refreshed AirPods Pro. And one of the latest iPads model may have a 15-inch screen. Video game creator Riot Games is going to start monitoring the chats of people playing Valorant. The studio is hoping to fight disruptive behavior during games. The voice data collection will begin on July 13th. Riot hopes to launch a beta version later this year. And there's a new streaming site billing itself as Spotify for nature lovers. It's called Earth FM. The site lets you listen to nature sounds from all over the world, from different bird species to forest noises. The sounds are also thought to help relieve listeners' stress. We can all use a little bit of that. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. I was what? just laughing. Time now, 518. I was looking for the flashing lights that you and I were seeing earlier on the camera as a trans guide, but I didn't see them. So let's go so ahead and check it out. What does that mean Steven. exactly? I don't know. Oh, no. What does it mean, what does Steven? It mean? <laughs> <laughs> you guys come to me and I have the answers. I actually Yay. have it on rotation right now. 35 at FM 306. That was some road work we saw over on the northeast side of town. But I wanted uh, our viewers to get a look at what they can expect elsewhere. There's 37 at Carolina now. now. We are seeing a few more folks out there. 1604 at Spurs Ranch. Not really a whole lot of activity out there. But keep in mind, there's a lot of those active construction spots. So you'll likely encounter some of those flashing lights. Let's start with that wide look at the map because some of those incidents we did report earlier, those are gone. But right now, all we are seeing are some of those active spots that you need to be aware of where we're going to see work taking place. So let's start here. Loop 1604 in the northwest side of San Antonio. This is for those overnight or early bird commuters. Bridge construction taking place. This is current, but should be wrapping up this Friday. That's July 1st, and it will start at 9 in the evening, wrap around 5 in the morning or so. But we know it does take crews some time to wrap things up and, and finish up the job there, but expect the eastbound main lane full closure from Kyle Seal Parkway to Chase Hill Boulevard. So as I mentioned, grab those phones. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Open those camera apps on your phone and scan this QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page, and that has the latest list of closures that are taking place in your area. And I just updated this list today, so just don't forget to scroll to the bottom of the screen. So there's going to be people out east of San Antonio waking up this morning going, what, what? Yeah, what great news. Yeah. yeah, and and watch as this loops on through for the past couple of hours. And obviously it was much more impressive earlier as it moved through Schulenburg. Yes, and it is starting to sort of die down just a bit more. So this is not going to be uh, the salvation. I doubt if this really holds together and really gets in toward, say, Seguin and or I doubt at all if this area of rain really gets in toward Bear County. But at least, I mean, you know, some of these folks are definitely seeing some of this um, right around Hallisville. Again, like I said, Schulenburg. These will continue, and even a couple of thunderstorms are left over in here. So these will continue to work their way to the east at about uh, 10, 15 miles per hour, not overly quick. So as this uh, continues off there, uh, we're going to be seeing uh, right around Welder about 529 this morning, Thompsonville 541. Again, if indeed these do hold together, but they are kind of showing signs that they're wanting to sort of uh, sort of fizzle out just a, a bit. But what we can take away from this is the atmosphere is sort of opened up now. We don't have that real tight lid on things anymore, so that's going to allow more showers to develop. So we've got that bit of a disturbance moving on in here, and then there's also sort of a front which is lying down in our direction. So that by later on this afternoon is going to start to be the focal point for more of these showers and thunderstorms to pop up. We'll have a couple of you know decent downpours here and there. Uh, it won't be raining constantly everywhere. This, of course, is not going to be a drought breaker, but at least there is that chance of rain um, in a good chunk of the area through this evening hours. Things tend to die off somewhat in the overnight hours, and then by tomorrow afternoon, it's going to start to pop up once again. So today, this may be a little generous to say 30 20 percent chance for some rain. Some of those leftover showers this morning off to the east primarily. Temperatures are going to make it up into the 80s today. And again, just keeping that that mention in there, if one of them decides to hang a, hang in there a little bit tough, but things will definitely taper off right around noon time on either side of that. We'll be up to 90 at noon. Then we are going to make it up to 97 today, so it's still going to be really hot today, but 
then temperatures will be dropping off as the wind shifts around out of the northeast a lot more and we will have uh, better rain chances. As far as who gets the most rain, this is through Friday evening. Notice off to the east where the uh, majority of that rain is. What we have going on here, this is a long range model. Here's the rain lift that still is around tomorrow. Things taper off somewhat Wednesday. I think we still have a few showers around here. Then we're going to be watching a low come in out of the Gulf of Mexico and this will continue to work its way up to the north. As of right now, the majority of this stays off to the east of us, but we'll definitely be watching that and we should get some wraparound showers from it, at least in about the eastern half of our viewing area. And that's going to be Thursday into Friday 90 at noon today. A couple of showers left over one or two of them still this morning and a lot of those will continue to die down off to the east and the 97 for a high temperature today. More scattered showers and thunderstorms are going to be developing later on today. Tomorrow, same situation. Look at the difference in temperatures. So still hot and humid today, but then we get that cooler air. Yeah, we'll just call it what it is. Cooler air, even though it's 90 coming in here. We stay in the low 90s through the rest of the week. Better rain chances today, tomorrow, and then especially off to the east Thursday, Friday. Got to continue to watch that low, makes a path a little further to the west. We get a bunch of rain then Thursday, Friday, but as of right now, it's going to be primarily off to the east. How exciting. Not only the 90s, but the low 90s. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're talking like 12 degrees difference. That's, yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good chunk. Yesterday it was 99, but, you know, 100s right. past few days. So, yeah. yeah, we're and we're below normal, believe it or not, for tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday. Great news. Never been this pumped up on a Monday in a while. <laughs> in a while. <laughs> Good point. Fired up. 523 and 77 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, Tom Cruise sets a personal record with Top Gun Maverick. Plus why Drake is in select company. Oh, well, it was another big weekend for Tom Cruise. And there's a new music from Megan Trainer. Here at CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Thrown into combat on a level no living pilot's ever seen. Not even him. Tom Cruise has reached a new level. Top Gun Maverick is his first movie ever to gross a billion dollars worldwide. Nearly half of that total has come from theaters outside North America, without the film playing in Russia or China. Please don't make promises that you Music from Megan Trainer. Bad for Me, featuring Teddy Swims, is the first single off Trainer's fourth full length album, Taking It Back, due out October 21st. How can you say you know what I'm feeling? Drake should be feeling pretty good, and not because in his latest music video, Falling Back, he marries two dozen women at once. His new album, Honestly Nevermind, has debuted atop the Billboard 200 Albums chart. It's Drake's 11th number one on that list. Only four other artists have more than 10 number ones on that chart. The Beatles, Jay-Z, Barbara Streisand, and Bruce Springsteen. Now that's something to celebrate. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, following the overturning of Roe versus Wade, we're going to take a look at the reactions that range from anger and fear to joy and gratitude. Plus, a first look at how therapy dogs are being used in a new and unique way right here in San Antonio. And welcome back. 531 making headlines this morning. Roe now overturned. The Supreme Court could soon be looking at other big changes in the weeks to come. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are excited about these changes coming in. Uh, it's been a long time since we've seen some rain anywhere. Yeah, good morning. It is Monday, June 27th, and there is some colors on the radar. Yes, very exciting. Exciting. I was like, the, the green. We, we like the green, Mike. We're like, wow, there was a yellow and a red earlier. Yeah, and even, <laughs> even though the rain on radar right now probably is going to be dying off in the next uh, oh. hour, hour and a half oh. or so. Oh. Just, oh. Hang on, hang on. It's a good indication that the atmosphere is now sort of opened up and we've got some other features coming on in to give us more rain chances. 79 right now. I mean, step outside and obviously in this picture it's not raining and it feels just the same as it has been 
forever. It seems like wind out of the uh, south uh, southwest. Now we've got these uh, showers off here to the east of us and notice as this loops on through how when it started off there are a lot more in the way of some thunderstorms, some heavier spots, the yellows and the reds. And yes, it is starting to ease up. Um, Hallettsville, Schulenburg, you may get in some decent showers, some showers. I mean, anything is wonderful and these will continue to work their way to the west at roughly 10 15 miles per hour again if indeed it does hold together obviously you may see some around gonzalez and seguin but there are some indications that these will continue to uh to die off but we have all is not this is not the end of it by any stretch we've got some other features of front lying in the area as well as a uh, low is just going to be developing in the uh, gulf of mexico and that's going to be for later on in the week mold uh, is on the low side of course, the updated count is going to be coming out in about a um, uh, couple of hours or so. Still going to be hot today. We're still going to make it up to 97 degrees. Yesterday we hit 99, and this is going to be earlier on in the day. Call it 3, 4 o'clock. And then with the wind shifting around, uh, we also have some cooler air and more clouds later on this afternoon. That will knock temperatures down. And then for 90, see that number there? That's where we're going to be for high temperatures for just about all of the rest of the week. Yes. Finally, details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Let's get a look at the roadways right now. We aren't really seeing a whole lot of activity from these shots at Transguide. We did talk about some flashing lights earlier. That has cleared out near FM 305, but right now we are seeing traffic starting to pick up. We're inching closer and closer to 6 a.m., so you know what that means. More folks waking up and getting their morning started with us. Looks like there could be a bug there off 281 at jones Maltzberger, though, so uh, not causing any issues with traffic, thankfully, but let's show you the wide look of the map because we talk a lot about these active construction spots, but one of the areas of concern is now going to be up here on the north side. This just popped up there off uh, 281 northbound near Stone Oak Parkway, a crash. Now here's the issue with that. There's no trans guide cameras that can show us any of those conditions out there, so we'll have to watch it closely, but you, if you're driving through there, just make sure you stay careful and keep your eyes on the road and both hands on the wheel, but let's bring it back here to trans guide. Things are moving fine so far. Far, but we're going to have more updates on construction and hopefully a better update on that crash on the north side in the next few minutes. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police want to know who took aim at a west side neighborhood, hating two people inside. Now two women are in the hospital, one of them in critical condition. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story. And Katrina, do police know why that home was targeted? Well, good morning, Stephanie. That seems to be one of the questions, one of the many questions that police are still trying to answer. Right now, it's not even clear if these two women were the actual targets of the shooting. The police got the call around midnight. They say they found both of the victims inside that home in the 200 block of Aztec Alley. They believe that one of the women is in her 20s, the other in her 60s. Officers told us the older woman suffered the most serious wounds. She was critical. The other was in serious condition. Police say they found evidence that someone fired more than 30 shots at that home, and they believe that person was in a car. But it seems that is about all they know at this point. No one so far has been able to offer them a description of the car, and police say they still don't know who shot those women or why. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, some Americans are concerned they could now lose more than a federal right to an abortion. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, they are concerned about birth control and same-sex marriage becoming illegal in some places, following a written statement by Justice Clarence Thomas. The reaction's emotional and at times violent. I'm angry, I'm fired up. That's after this Supreme Court ruling that overturns Roe versus Wade. Senator Lindsey Graham thanking former President Donald Trump for appointing conservative justices to the high court. This Trump ally calling the ruling a win for white life. President Trump, on behalf of all the MAGA patriots in America, I want to thank you for the historic victory for white life in the Supreme Court yesterday. 
She later said she meant right to life. Some Americans say they're afraid of what other rights they could lose next. In the majority opinion, Justice Samuel Alito says the ruling only involves abortion. But this concurring opinion from Justice Clarence Thomas goes further. He challenges the related legal basis that guarantees access to contraceptives and same-sex marriage. Clarence Thomas, you say that there were errors in judgment made in those in those cases. I really suggest, Clarence Thomas, that you look in the mirror because that is the error in judgment. The fear that more rights are at risk has some pride events looking different this year. That as new battlegrounds emerge in the abortion debate. This fight is far from over, right? It goes to the states. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The first full weekend of summer brought more frustration for air travelers. According to FlightAware, more than 700 flights were canceled across the U.S. on Sunday. Delta Airlines and its Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Hub were the most affected. Delta blamed higher than expected employee absences, weather and air traffic control restrictions. United Airlines canceled more than 70 flights and American Airlines canceled 66 flights. President Joe Biden is now in Germany for a week of important summits in Europe. This past weekend, Biden met with the G7 leaders to work on stabilizing global energy markets as well as an import ban on gold from Russia. Later this week, Biden will also be attending a NATO summit, which is expected to address the war in Ukraine, including virtual appearances by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. The NATO summit being held in Madrid was initially hoped to be a welcoming party for the alliance's newest members, Sweden and Finland, but their membership is at least temporarily on hold due to objections from Turkey. Biden is also hoping to announce new sanctions and military assistance alongside European allies during his visits to Germany and Spain. Back here at home, violent crime seems like it's been on the rise here in the Alamo City lately, and it seems like every day there are more shootings to tell you about. This weekend, SAPD Chief William McManus joined us on Leading SA to talk about that trend. Chief McManus joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about the actual rise in violent crime. We talked about the plan moving forward, working with criminologists, and we talked about some of the chief's frustrations with the current situation. Here's a little bit of our conversation. You're very candid about it. I'm concerned that there are several things that, that lead to um, lead to the violence, lead to the repeat offenders being still being out on the street. And I think that low bail, no bail is a problem. You have people who are being arrested for uh, a variety of crimes, violent crimes included, who are who are being put back on the street. No pretrial detention. Witnesses won't talk because they're out there and they're afraid that uh, of retaliation. I think there's a, a lack of fear of consequence. And, and I'm concerned about it. I, I think that this movement to keep people out of jail is a problem. Chief McManus talked a lot about repeat offenders and he had a message for a lot of concerned families in and around our community. You can watch our full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. And of course, we have Leading SA every Sunday at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. And time now, 540 and 77 degrees for now. Good news for young mom and dads. More baby formula has arrived in Texas. Details just ahead. The benefits of therapy dogs are being studied right here in San Antonio, but it's the type of patients they're being assigned to that has people paying close attention to the results. And outside with live cam, we've had a little bit of rain out east. It's trying to push its way towards San Antonio. Will it make it today? We don't know, but we've got a lot of chances of rain throughout the week. My Coast Stage has your forecast coming up, and it looks good. Welcome back. It is 543. Many patients with high blood pressure or diabetes end up with kidney damage or failure, and they depend on dialysis. But the life-saving treatment is intensive, typically four hours at a time, three times a week. And as Courtney Friedman reports, one-of-a-kind study here in San Antonio is trying to find out if a special type of therapy can help dialysis patients stay on schedule. There's my boy. Yeah. How you doing, my 
Mickey. Amber Pena waits all week for this welcome. Oh, you know I have them in my hand, don't you? Oh, yeah. You know I... Pena has been on dialysis for four years. Well, I had a very severe diabetes. I mean, I'd eat something and my blood sugar would be up to 500. And I had a bad hypertension problem. She spends four hours at U.S. Renal Care three times a week. It can get exhausting. But for the last 11 weeks, she's had this to look forward to. And she can't wait to show up for treatment. I know they help my mood because I get happy every time I think about getting to see them. The pet therapy, part of a rare study happening in San Antonio. The treatment has never been studied in a dialysis setting. Both chronic pain and depression are very common problems in dialysis patients. And when these two particular problems aren't managed well, they can sometimes lead to them missing their scheduled appointments. Dr. They Meredith Stenslin with UT Health San Antonio is heading the research and says mistreatments put patients' lives at risk. Winding up in the ER, being hospitalized, even in the ICU. So she's tracking visits with the dogs, differences in pain, mood, and any missed appointments. So this is a randomized trial. So some of the patients get to meet with dogs like Gus twice a week and others get to meet with them once. We're having patients ask if they can get more visits per week than they were randomized to receive. Um, they're asking for the study to extend beyond the 12 week trial. So it's safe to say the patient response is looking great. With this trial, we're really hoping that this is like spearhead of something that we can we can offer permanently for our patients. Dr. Adrian Eloriaga oversees the research department at US renal care, which offers patients dialysis all over the nation, who, like Pena, may just need a little boost from a furry friend. I'm going to fool you. I'm going to fool you. Now, most of the patients are wrapping up their 12 weeks of the study this week. A few started later, and they'll be finished by July 9th. They hope the results will be as positive as they expect, and more clinics will begin pet therapy for their patients. 545, 77 degrees. And good news for new parents. Baby formula has finally arrived in Texas. We're going to have an update next. And welcome back. It's 548. In your morning consumer headlines, the supply chain crisis has retailers considering the unthinkable. Instead of returning your unwinded items, just keep them. Some of the biggest store chains have reported in their latest earnings calls that they have too much inventory. With the cost of storage rising, many stores are figuring out it's cheaper just to give customers their refunds and let them keep the merchandise. It's a trend that started with Amazon several years ago. Several big box retailers are also known to be practicing it. More than 150,000 pounds of baby formula from Germany, now in Texas. The shipment arrives Sunday morning in Houston. It's enough to provide formula for one and a half million bottles. The shipment will now make its way to the Nestle Distribution Center in Fort Worth, so it can be distributed to Target, Walmart, Kroger, and other retailers across the state of Texas and the U.S. And I'm looking at those trans guy cameras, looking at some activity there at Loop 410. I'm going to go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Uh, people have to get up early and get their day started, but uh, thankfully nothing major is going to slow you down just yet. So enjoy the travel to your travels as much as you can this morning. There's US 90 at Couples. Now this is an area that tends to get pretty busy around this time as we start seeing more folks waking up and getting the day, start day started. But let's talk about what we're seeing here on the map. It looks like a crash may have popped up near State Highway 16, but we'll take a look at that in just a minute, but I really want to bring it into what we saw earlier here off of 281 in those southbound lanes. There was a minor buildup that was building there in the southbound lanes of Stone Oak Parkway due to a crash. But keep in mind, there's also a lot of crews out there working on the roadways, so not a good place to be anytime that there's an incident. But looks like that is clearing up, and we really don't have to worry about that. But as always, we want to make sure that you plan ahead, especially if you're going to be traveling down US 90 over the next few days, because we have some metal guard fence insulation taking place now keep in mind this does start today uh, should be wrapping on Friday July 1st that starts at 9 in the morning and 5 in the afternoon but we all know those crews get out there pretty early so keep that in mind as well single main lane closures in both directions right there at Montgomery Road but let's take one last look back here in town looks like people are up and things are moving just fine how long will it last well we're not too sure but just remember to keep your eyes on the road for now let's check in with Mike Osterhage thank you sir uh, as far as any any 
rain this morning for the morning commute and kind of doubting it now because as you look at these showers off here to the uh, east of us, they have definitely been dying down as the the morning has rolled on and you know, not even any uh, thunderstorms are being reported anymore. So some of these may actually work their way in toward Gonzales, but and perhaps Luling, you may see a couple of those showers there. But again, this is continuing to sort of sort of die down if it makes it as far as Seguin. Consider yourself very fortunate with that. But this is not going to be what we're really looking forward to. But it is nice to see that the atmosphere is sort of uh, just open to the idea, if you will, of some rain. So those a uh, couple of showers left over this morning and then we'll just have partly cloudy skies. Maybe just a, a stray shower here and there. We're going to make it up to 90 today at noon and then up into the mid 90s and upper 90s later on this afternoon. So it's still going to be very hot and very humid, but look at how we have that 30 40% chance for showers and thunderstorms going into late this afternoon. So that's the good news. That's when things obviously do start to fire up. Now, as far as the rainfall potential, this is going through Friday. So this, you know, we'll have some decent showers here and there, but this is just kind of the the broad brush off to the west. It's not going to be quite as much um, quarter half, maybe three quarters of an inch of rain will be pushing at um, anywhere from a half an inch to an inch and a half to an inch here in town and then more of that further off to the east. And of course, there's going to be those localized heavier amounts on top of that. So here's what's going to be going on. We have the showers around here today as as well as tomorrow. We'll have more of those showers refiring later on today. Then we get into later on in the week and sort of a, begin to have a lull in the action, but we're going to be watching a low developing down here in the Gulf of Mexico. And this, as of right now, is going to be taking a path in our eastern counties, just about straight up to the north. Now, some of the hope is that we get some of those wraparound showers around here and if this moves a little further to the west, obviously we'd be seeing more. But as of right now, the majority of this rain in through Friday and even into Friday evening is going to be further off to the uh, to the east of us. What we're finally seeing, though, is that high, which is finally broken down and weakened somewhat, moved off to the west. And now this is the low that's developing right here that's going to be moving up in our uh, eastern counties. So that later on in the week so today. Got those couple of showers off to the east this morning. We see the lull in the action, maybe a leftover shower at noon. Kind of wishful thinking there, 90. And then we are going to be seeing more showers and thunderstorms developing later on this afternoon. Still going to be hot. We'll hit that 97 right around 3, 4 o'clock. And then temperatures will start to drop down into the lower 90s by dinner time and early evening. And then we only top off at 90 tomorrow and stay in the low 90s the rest of the week with the better chance of rain is going to be today as well as tomorrow it starts to to kind of ease up a little bit and then Thursday, Friday, still a few showers. Now, most of that rain Thursday, Friday again is going to be off to the east. We watch that low, see what the path does. You know, we're getting some wraparound showers here. Most of that rain uh, would be east, but if that takes a little, you know, just a couple 20, 30 miles further to the west, we'd see a whole lot more rain by Thursday, Friday. So we'll keep watching that. Still excited about any chances and yeah. seeing the 90s up there. Yeah, lower temperatures helping out with the electric bill. Yes, and um, yeah, those rain chances. Not a drought buster, but right. great to see. Better than nothing. Yes. Yep. Which we've had a lot of. 554, <laughs> yes. 77 degrees. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. 635, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 1624, Fireball 9. And your cash 5 is 2, 11, 12, 16, 18, Lotto Texas, 7, 10, 23, 34, 46, 47, and... Powerball, 6, 12, 20, 27, 32. Powerball is 4. Power play is 3. Good luck. We'll be right back. Coming up on the next hour of Good Morning, San Antonio, we're going to be giving you an inside look at the training needed to help the U.S. Air Force complete its mission around the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. Plus, a drive-by shooting on the west side has police looking for the shooter. We've got an update on that as well. And Trans Guide, things looking pretty smooth, but uh, Stephen Gavasso says it is Monday, which means it's going to pick up a little bit. And he's got your traffic forecast. And Mike's excited today. He's talking about some rain in the forecast. We've got all that for you coming up in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. 
Police say two gunmen are on the run this morning after a robbery in a southeast side park that escalated into a shooting that sent one person to the hospital. The story is straight ahead. And protests continue around the country days after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. But a new focus of the tense debate. We've got the latest coming up. Taking a look outside with live cam. Maybe you can't see it now, but we are looking forward to some changes very soon. Live from KSEDO, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Monday. It is June 27th, and it's the best Monday you've had in a long time. I agree. Happy Monday. <laughs> we are finally looking because forward to some changes. Yes. Mike has been showing us some color on the radar we, we haven't seen in a while. Yes, we have had some rain. And still have some rain on radar. This current batch is going to be kind of fizzling, but then more is going to be developing yeah. next couple of days. And the, the seven day forecast is just fantastic. So we've got some clear skies. And then off in the distance, there are some clouds out there. And if you look way off to the east, there are some of those showers. Now, as this loops back through, notice how there were a lot more in the way of some lightning strikes being detected, some heavier rain. So this is continuing to fizzle on out. Gonzalez, you're going to be seeing some of this rain. Whether it holds together, even as far as Seguin, um, that's kind of a, a wait and see sort of situation. It looks like it is going to continue to to die off. But what we can take away from this is the fact that the atmosphere is now kind of open for business and we've got uh, some better rain chances now just kind of uh, managing expectations. This is not going to be a drop buster. We will see, you know, some folks off to the west, just a quarter of an inch of rain inch here in town is possible and then more off to the east. There's going to be some hit and miss showers and storms. They're not going to be raining constantly. Uh, most yards say on average quarter inch to a half an inch of rain. Obviously, there's going to be some of those heavier amounts on at 78 degrees right now here in town, 74 Seguin, Converse and 70 in Comfort and still very humid out there. We do have a light amount of mold in the atmosphere. The updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour and a half or so. So mid 70s this morning, couple of those leftover showers off to the east. Um, then they are going to continue to die down. We of a lull in the action, then things are going to start to pick back up again later on today. We'll be up to 90 at noon. Still going to be a hot day today. We'll make it up to 97 degrees, and that's going to be four o'clock in the afternoon, then temperatures will start to drop off somewhat by dinner time, and uh, we'll see that decline starting there by about five o'clock. And then we have more showers coming up here over the next couple of days. We're going to see all the details with this. And look at those numbers. First of all, no hundreds. Look at that. No hundreds. Yay. Cheer about that. The 90s and some rain chances. <laughs> details. I got a smattering of applause, golf applause from David. So, uh, time saver, <laughs> traffic authority, time saver traffic. Wow, I am excited. <laughs> pulling up, pulling up phrases from ten years ago. Yeah, so. that's uh, not throwback Thursday just yet, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Let's get a look right now at your current traffic. 35 at Alamo. Not a lot that we're really seeing out there. You can just see the morning is getting going. People are waking up, getting their day started. Hopefully, grabbing that cup of coffee or maybe a breakfast taco today. But uh, nothing major is going to slow you down. But as always. We want you to remain alert of what's happening around you because we have a crash here off Loop 410 eastbound near Old Pearsall Road. Unfortunately, not sure if the driver or anyone else involved have faced any injuries, but we will continue to watch that area closely. Right now, it's not looking like it's causing any issues for drivers in that particular uh, space of road there, but you got to watch out because we have seen a few crashes pop up then clear out. So, but the main thing is going to be some of these active construction spots. And as the morning does continue, of course, we're going to keep you updated on that. But if your travels right now are taking you into downtown San Antonio. Well, we have those travel times. I 10 westbound heading in eastbound. Pardon me, westbound. Pardon me. Coming in from Seguin is a 29 minute drive time at this hour. If you're heading in from 87 and Lavernia, it's about 33 minutes and it looks like 27 minutes right now traveling up from Floresville. But we're not really concerned about any of those travel times. We're just going to have to stay focused on the roads this morning. We'll continue to watch things closely and as always make sure you do the same. David Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, San Antonio police say two gunmen target four friends sitting inside a car in a southeast side park, opening fire and then hitting a 19 year old woman. All this happened last night around 11 o'clock in Pickwell Park off a of southeast military drive just behind the Family Proactive Services building. 
Officers say while sitting in a vehicle in the park, two men with guns stepped up to the vehicle and demanded money and property. Police say that's when the driver took off. They said the suspect started shooting, hitting the 19 year old in the passenger seat. The driver made it to the Cracker Barrel on Southeast Military and called for help. She was taken to the hospital in stable condition. So far, no arrests have been made. Police are still investigating. And the crash between two vehicles on the west side ends up with one going up in flames. It happened at the intersection of Bandera and St. Cloud at about 945 last night. Police tell us after the crash, one of the vehicles then drove into a utility pole catching fire. The driver was taken to Bansi for burns. Officers tell us that two people in the other vehicle appeared to be OK. That crash is under investigation. Dear Uvalde Love Parkland, two cities bonded in tragedy. Now, we do want to warn you that this story references suicide, and if you or someone you know is struggling, you can reach the National Suicide Hotline at 800-273-8255. A special delegation from Parkland, Florida, in Uvalde Sunday, handing out 600 life boxes. Their purpose, to help Uvalde residents deal with their grief after the Robb Elementary Massacre. Each box contains a Bible, journal, pen, and other items to let people know they're not alone. The boxes are separated by age group and are available in Spanish and English. Heather Palacios is the founder of the Life Boxes. She's a pastor and lived near Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School back in 2018 when 17 people were killed by a 19-year-old shooter. I know what it's like to live in a community where there has been a measurable tragedy. And I can't fix anything, but I can do something small for anybody on the cusp of wanting to give up. And we're told any boxes not picked up will be left with businesses in the community to be handed out to anyone in need. Parents across our community taking advantage of the first opportunities to have their young children receive the COVID-19 vaccine. University Health was administering shots to kids under the age of five Thursday through Saturday. Their appointments booked up quick. Two women we spoke with say they wanted to jump at the opportunity because school is just around the corner and getting their kids added protection against COVID-19 gives them a sense of relief. We told him um, that it was something to help his body strong and that we would get donuts afterwards and he took it really, really well. Being premature, we wanted to jump on the opportunity as soon as possible. They look at them. They're off and running like if nothing happened. Doctors say the dose of the vaccine is about a third of what older kids get because of the lower doses. The younger age group will get a series of three shots. And this morning, Americans are waking up to the first week without legal abortion in every state. Shockway is still being felt from the Supreme Court's decision Friday to overturn Roe v. Wade, a landmark case that gave women a constitutional right to an abortion. Protests continued in cities from coast to coast this weekend, and now there's a new focus of this tense debate, the abortion pill. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more from Washington. Overnight, a candlelight vigil on the steps of the Supreme Court following a weekend of protests from abortion rights activists after the court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Protesters filling the streets in cities nationwide. Most demonstrations peaceful, but in Vermont, windows seen smashed at the state house, and in Colorado, a Christian pregnancy center burned. The high court's decision now leaving it up to individual states to regulate abortion. So far, eight states have already outlawed abortion, and 11 no longer have a single clinic performing the procedure. There's confusion, shock, concern, um, a lot of questions about why care was not available in Arkansas, but it would be available potentially in Illinois, for example. Anti-abortion rights groups celebrating. I'm actually very thrilled uh, after many, many rosaries and a lot of praying. For many, the focus now turning to abortion pills. Recent data shows abortion pills, some mailed to women and taken at home, are being used in more than half of procedures in the U.S. Hours after the court's decision, Attorney General Merrick Garland saying states cannot prohibit the use of the FDA-approved abortion pill, Mifepristone. But in South Dakota, the governor indicating she plans to ban the pill from being mailed to women in her state. I don't believe that the telemedicine abortions are safe for individuals, for women to conduct at home. Other states like Texas, Arkansas and Arizona also working to restrict abortion pills, teeing up a potential clash in court with the Biden administration. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. 
and local business headlines. 150 people who work at the Coleman plant in New Braunfels are expected to lose their jobs. Company officials announcing the plant is closing down. Plant officials say they are working with New Braunfels Chamber of Commerce to help the laid off employees find new jobs. The closure is reported by the New Braunfels Herald Zaitong. 47 employees will lose their jobs at the end of August, 55 more at the end of October, and the rest in early December. The plant will stop production in October and consolidate business operations to their other location in Kansas. The plant has been operating in New Braunfels for 40 years. Time now, 610 and 77 degrees for now. Still coming up, Apple says it's getting ready to release several new devices this fall. We'll tell you what they are. Long lines and cancellations continue at airports across the country, hindering summer travel plans. Find out why some experts are now saying driving may be a better way to travel. That's coming up after the break. And speaking of driving, you might need some windshield wipers this week. Better check hey. those things out. Never know. Mike says we might have some rain coming our way. We can only hope. Welcome back. It's 614. I'm turning more to travel trouble for people trying to get away for summer vacation. Lines at the airport are growing longer, and so is a list of canceled flights. But there is some good news if you're planning to drive. ABC's Rihanna and Ali has more. This morning, growing concern about 4th of July travel chaos. After the first official weekend of summer turned into a nightmare for some flyers. It was on time the whole time, and then next thing you know, I get a notification on my phone, flights canceled. Airlines canceled more than 700 flights yesterday alone. Delta canceled more than 200. The airline blames compounding factors, including weather and air traffic control issues. An airline lobbying group is calling on the Biden administration to address staffing shortages at air traffic control centers, which are run by the FAA. According to Business Insider, Airlines for America recently wrote to Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg saying air traffic control issues contributed to at least one third of recent flight cancellations. For me, I think if you can't handle these flights, then just don't book them because this is very frustrating being stranded at an airport. Air travel is only expected to increase through the summer. The TSA screened more than 2.4 million passengers Friday, the highest daily total since February of 2020. As for people driving to their summer destinations, gas prices are finally on the way down, dropping more than eight cents in the last week, thanks to an increase in supply. Drivers in Los Angeles have seen prices drop for 12 consecutive days. And experts say the national average for regular gas could drop another 20 cents by the 4th of July, barring any unforeseen events. We could see gas prices shoot up if there is a major disruption in the form of a hurricane or other refinery outage. Gas prices will still be the highest ever for a July 4th holiday. The national average right now, $4.90 a gallon. Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. So Monday morning traffic is going to be a little more hectic. Maybe because gas prices are going down after this weekend. Well, we'll see. But maybe a lot of people will have off and just, you know, call it a day. <laughs> well, that's good. Stay yeah. Well, right now we can say that there's traffic, uh, tranquil traffic, at least what we're seeing here at 35 at Alamo. Really not seeing a whole lot of issues out on the roadways this early in the morning. But keep in mind, it is still very early. Some people are get, just getting up and right now some others are getting out the door. So we can expect more things to pop up as the morning does get rolling. But right now we can enjoy the roads while we can. Let's Let's go ahead and take a look though. We did have a crash off 410 eastbound at Old Pearsall Road. This was over on the southwest side of San Antonio, but we're not seeing any issues in terms of congestion or delays. Just make sure anytime you see those flashing lights, you got to move over and slow down. Those are the rules of the road. But now let's get a wide look at the map. A lot of those active construction spots, and it looks like we have a few stalls that may have popped up over on the northeast side along 35. You can see them here on your screen, not causing any issues just yet, but I'll take a closer look as the morning does get going. But plan your commute because we do have some striping operations taking place here on State Highway 123 in Guadalupe County. This does start tomorrow, so I want to make sure that people know about this because it's going to continue all the way up until Friday, July 1st, 8 in the morning to 530 in the afternoon, so it's going to take the whole day. But keep in mind, single lane closures in both directions from Angel Lane to FM 477. So make sure you plan your commute, but right now back here on Transguide, things look just fine. But for now, let's check in the forecast with Mike Osterhage. 
Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, I think I was a little over anxious this morning looking <laughs> at those showers off to these. They pretty much have all died down. Notice how we've got just a few uh, high clouds hanging around here. And here's the uh, the leftovers. Yes, there is some of this rain obviously moving in toward Gonzales. It may hold together by the time it makes it to uh, Luling right there. But yeah, these are, are dying off. Um, even a couple of showers perhaps past that. If you get one or two of them in Seguin, consider yourself fortunate this morning. This doesn't mean this is the end of it. However, we do have more obviously in store. Here's the computer model through the rest of the morning. And actually, this model did a very good job as far as indicating these uh, showers are going to be dying off. But then by later on this afternoon, more start to pop up around here. We do have sort of a front which is going to be lying across the area. It's moving down in here, and that's going to be the focal point for the, the good triggering mechanism for these showers, even a few uh, thunderstorms around here. So it's going to be, you know, scattershot. We'll have a uh, couple of decent downpours all the way through dinner time into early evening hours and then going on into later on tonight. Again, not raining constantly everywhere. Things die down somewhat overnight, and then they're going to refire tomorrow afternoon. So the better chances of rain this week right now are today as well as tomorrow. Again, not raining everywhere. Then we things start to uh, sort of taper off just a little bit. First of all, as far as today, we are going to make it up through the uh, upper 70s into the low 80s and uh, took out the rain chance throughout the rest of the morning. You know, one or two leftover showers off to the east. 90 at noon. Then rain chances start to pick back up again. It is going to be hot again today. 97 high temperature and, and pretty humid as well. Um, and we'll have more showers and even a couple of thunderstorms developing and then temperatures are going to be dropping off as we go in toward dinner time. should be in the low 90s then by dinner time here in town. So here's a little bit longer range computer model and this is also encouraging and something we do definitely have to watch later on in the week. Those few showers left around here, a couple of them on Wednesday, Wednesday lesser chances of rain and then we get into Thursday and Friday. We've got this low coming in here out of the Gulf of Mexico and what we're looking at is right now computer models have this moving almost straight up to the east kind of grazing our eastern counties. What we're hoping for is some wraparound with this low spinning in a counterclockwise direction. This is going to be going on through Friday and then into the uh, afternoon hours couple of different things. Obviously we look at the wraparound showers and should this decide to move 20, 30, 50 miles a little further to the west, then more of the area is going to be getting rain from this as we go in through Friday. But at least we will keep some rain chances around here. Obviously, the majority of this well off to the east, and that's going to be then Thursday and Friday. But overall, temperatures are going to be down considerably. Now, we'll be at 90 today. Maybe a leftover shower or one trying to pop up, kind of being a little too optimistic, I think. Uh, but then 97 for a high temperature today, which is going to be going to be three, four o'clock in the afternoon. Then temperatures will start to drop down. We do have that 40% for showers and thunderstorms later on this afternoon, as well as tomorrow. 90, that's it for a high temperature tomorrow. And we stay in the low 90s really the rest of the week. Better rain chances right now, Monday, Tuesday, and then lessening through the week. But for Thursday, Friday, that's going to be further off to the east. We're going to have to keep an eye on that uh, low coming in here out of the Gulf. The exact path it takes, like I said, a little further west, mm -hmm. and then more of us get some rain Thursday and Friday. That would be nice. Good looking forecast. Nice way to end up the month and start July on Friday. I agree. Thank you, Mike. Maybe we'll start July with some rain and actually be ahead for the month. I'd like that. Be nice. <laughs> 622 and it is 70. What does that say? I can't even see that anymore. 76 degrees. It's Good coming up. <laughs> I had to look too. Coming up next, Apple is gearing up to roll out several new devices, including four new iPhones. There's a different way to treat HIV. It's every other month injectable Cabinuva. For adults who are undetectable, Cabinuva is the only complete HIV treatment you can get every other month. Cabinuva helps keep me undetectable. It's two injections given by my healthcare provider every other month. It's one less thing to think about while traveling. HIV pills aren't on my mind. 
A quick change in my plans is no big deal. Don't receive Cabinuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabinuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabinuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. If you switch to Cabinuva, attend all treatment appointments. Every other month, and I'm good to go. Ask your doctor about every other month Cabinuva. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple reportedly on the verge of launching a flood of new devices. Starting this fall, we can expect to see four new iPhone 14s, a trio of updated Apple Watches, and refreshed AirPods Pro. And one of the latest iPod, iPads models may have a 15-inch screen. Ooh. Video game creator Riot Games is going to start monitoring the chats of those playing Valorant. The studio believes it's a way to combat disruptive behavior during games. The voice data collection will begin on July 13th, and Riot hopes to launch a beta version later this year. And there's a new streaming site billing itself as Spotify-like for nature. It's called Earth FM. It lets you listen to nature sounds from all over the world, from different bird species to forest noises. The sounds are also thought to help relieve listeners' stress. Hmm, hopefully it's relaxing. Be nice. Yeah. Time now, 626 and 76 degrees for now. And coming up in the next half hour, safety is the operative word during training conducted here in San Antonio for U.S. Air Force members who make up the air crew. We're going to give you an in-depth look at that training. And we're going to hear from San Antonio Police Chief William McManus about crime in our city. He tells us why he thinks it's on the rise. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guy looking there at Highway 281 at Jones Maltzberger. Things looking good. Also looking good at Highway 90 at Couples, but we will be checking in soon with our Stephen Cavazos. A lot of hard work goes into coordinating, planning, and executing any military flight, especially when transporting supplies and people. What that looks like for Air Force loadmasters and Air Force flight attendants coming up on GMSA. Outside with live cam, if you are waking up east of San Antonio along I-10, you might have some moisture in your yard. You might have a little wet road when you get ready to go to work. Just a little, and it might get better as the week goes on. Mike's got that for us coming up. How exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. It is Monday, June 27th. Happy Monday. We truly mean happy Monday this time around, right? Not too many Mondays lately that we've had a chance for rain. And it is going to get better as the week rolls on because temperatures are going to be down yep. roughly 10 degrees mm -hmm. from, you know, we've been around 100 forever. And so we're going to be around 90 the rest of the week. Not today, though. We'll still be on the hot side today. We've got some clouds hanging around here and uh, temperature right now. Step outside. And it's like, OK, this feels like every other Monday that we've had around here. 78 degrees, a fair amount of moisture. Dew points are at 67, so still on the, the humid side, but here's what radar is showing right now. And uh, yeah, right there along 10, a couple of these light little showers, some around Gonzales. It's not even looking like they're going to be uh, hanging together to even make it as far as Seguin. So, but this is, even though this is dying down, this is not the end of it at all. What this is a good indication of is that the atmosphere is kind of open for business as far as uh, rain chances. We don't have that tight lid sitting on things anymore. Uh, mold is on the low side. The updated count is going to come out in about an hour or so. A couple of uh, showers, thunderstorms well off to these. That was earlier this morning. And then uh, we are going to be seeing hot temperatures, a couple of scattered showers and thunderstorms later on this afternoon. More scattered storms and, like I said, only right around 90 and that's going to be throughout the rest of the week. We'll still have a couple of rain chances, even though the better rain chances are going to be this afternoon as well as tomorrow. Still got to keep an eye on something coming in here out of the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, which will keep those rain chances around through the end of the week, primarily off to the east. But we'll get that all sorted out in just a couple of moments. And who gets how much? That's going to be answered as well. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? 
There's really not been a whole lot to talk about over here, Mike. As we get a look at Transguide, we are seeing just people getting out on the roadways right now, hopefully grabbing that cup of coffee. I prefer some matcha tea myself this morning, but right now things look to be moving just fine. Let's go ahead and take a look, though, at the map, because although we are seeing traffic moving, one of the main things we've really started to notice now are a lot of those stalls. So as a reminder, check those vehicles. It's also National uh, Tire Safety Week, so make sure you check your tires as well if you have any big road plans or road trips later this weekend. And want to make sure everything's working properly. But if you are going to be traveling into San Antonio, not that far of a drive for any of these communities, really 23 minutes on I-10 eastbound coming in from Bernie to downtown 26. If you're heading down to southbound 281 southbound in Bilverde, 26 minutes, not looking too bad just yet. 25 on 35 coming in from New Braunfels southbound. So no worries there. But as we bring it back to trans guy, things are looking just fine. We'll continue to watch the roads closely and have more updates coming up right here on GMSA. David Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. And we got some breaking news coming into the newsroom. It's happening on the west side. It started about 530 this morning. We're told police now have control of the dangerous situation. We're going to go ahead and check in with Katrina Weber, who is live there. Well, good morning, Stephanie and David. Uh, that was a situation, according to police, that involved someone shooting out into the street from a home here in the 5200 block of Silvertip. But police say they do have that man in custody. Let me give you a look at the scene so you can see uh, what is happening. Uh, police have been focusing on the home there. Uh, again, 5200 block of Silvertip. This is near Ingram and Callahan. Uh, police say that they got a call about gunshots in the area. They arrived here. They couldn't tell where those shots were coming from. So they called for backup from some officers who had long guns, rifles and shotguns. They also showed up here. Uh, eventually, police were able to figure out where the shots were coming from. They say that a man was inside his home firing through his bedroom window out here into the street. Some of those shots hit the fence across the street as well as possibly the pool in that backyard. But no one was hit by the gunfire. Police say they were able to talk that man into coming out and giving up peacefully. They are taking him in right now for a possible mental evaluation but they do have the situation under control and again police say the good news is that no one was hit by that gunfire that was coming out of that house reporting live on the northwest side Katrina Weber KSAT 12 news thank you Katrina new this morning San Antonio police are looking for those responsible for firing more than 30 shots at a house on the city's west side overnight so this happened around midnight on Aztec Alley near South Zarzamora police say someone in a vehicle drove up to the house and started shooting two women inside the home were hurt police say a woman in her 60s was taken to the hospital in critical condition and a younger woman was taken in serious condition so far there are no descriptions of the vehicle or the suspects San Antonio police say three people, including a child, just walked away from a pretty freak accident. It caused the vehicle they were in to just launch off the road. Officers say a man, woman and child were in a vehicle exiting Loop 410 to get onto Northwest Military Drive when the steering locked up. Police say the vehicle launched off the ramp, landed upside down on the access road. Amazingly, no injuries reported. San Antonio police say a homeless man had to be taken to the hospital after he was attacked by two other homeless men. This happened in the 2300 block of South Flores near West Lambert Street around 1240 this morning. Police say the victim was cut in the hand. Authorities say the two suspects got away. And this morning, Crime Stoppers asking for your help to solve the murder of an 18 year old man back on April 7th, 2021. Police say 18 year old Cassius Clay Wilson found dead in an alley in the 2000 block of Texas Avenue. He'd been shot. It's been more than a year and police need your help finding his killer. Anyone with any information is urged to call Crime Stoppers. A number on your screen, 210-224-7867. When you call, you can remain anonymous. Crime Stoppers will pay up to $5,000 for information that leads to a felony arrest. Violent crime seems like it's been on the rise lately in the Alamo City. It's almost like every morning there are more shootings to tell you about. This weekend, Police Chief William McManus joined us on Leading SA to talk about the trend. Chief McManus joined us and we talked about a lot. We talked about the actual rise in violent crime. We talked about the plan moving forward, working with criminologists, and we talked about some of the chief's frustrations with the current situation. Here's a little bit of our conversation. You're very candid about it. I'm concerned that there are several things that, that lead, to, um, lead to the violence, lead to the repeat offenders being still being out on the street. And I think that low bail, no bail, 
is a problem. You have people who are being arrested for uh, a variety of crimes, violent crimes included, who are who are being put back on the street, no pretrial detention. Witnesses won't talk because they're out there and they're afraid that uh, of retaliation. I think there's a, a lack of fear of consequence, and, and I'm concerned about it. I, I think that this movement to keep people out of jail is a problem. Chief McManus talked a lot about repeat offenders, and he had a message for a lot of concerned families in and around our community. You can watch our full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. And of course, we have Leading Essay every Sunday at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. This morning, some Americans are concerned they could now lose more than a federal right to an abortion. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, they're concerned about birth control and same-sex marriage becoming illegal in some places, following a written statement by Justice Clarence Thomas. The reaction's emotional and at times violent. I'm angry, I'm fired up. That's after this Supreme Court ruling that overturns Roe versus Wade. Senator Lindsey Graham thanking former President Donald Trump for appointing conservative justices to the high court. This Trump ally calling the ruling a win for white life. President Trump, on behalf of all the MAGA patriots in America, I want to thank you for the historic victory for white life in the Supreme Court yesterday. She later said she meant right to life. Some Americans say they're afraid of what other rights they could lose next. In the majority opinion, Justice Samuel Alito says the ruling only involves abortion. But this concurring opinion from Justice Clarence Thomas goes further. He challenges the related legal basis that guarantees access to contraceptives and same-sex marriage. Clarence Thomas, you say that there were errors in judgment made in those in those cases. I really suggest Clarence Thomas that you look in the mirror because that is the error in judgment. The fear that more rights are at risk has some pride events looking different this year. That as new battlegrounds emerge in the abortion debate. This fight is far from over, right? It goes to the states. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. It's now 640 and 76 degrees. Critical training is taking place right here in San Antonio. This is crucial to the success of Air Force transport missions around the world. Coming up next, we're taking you inside the Career Enlisted Aviator Center of Excellence that is responsible for producing elite air crews. And welcome back at 644. When it comes to air power, there are many factors and people that come into play to execute the U.S. Air Force mission successfully. And that takes a lot of hours of training and close attention to detail and safety. Uh, Jonathan Cotto visited with the Air Force's Center of Excellence and walked us through air crew fundamentals where every enlisted aviator learns how to provide air support and service. This is the Career Enlisted Aviator Center of Excellence, where enlisted aviators are trained in everything from aircrew fundamentals on aerodynamics. Hey, good morning. Today we are going to go over and recap some things over basic aviation principles. To safety procedures in flight. And a critical part of the training includes this altitude chamber. And our primary goal with the chamber is to teach them about hypoxia, which is the lack of oxygen to the brain caused by low pressure. This chamber is one of the only devices that can hold up to 18 people and one of 10 nationwide. Our enlisted aviators are a vital member of the crew. So this is dedicated entirely to the enlisted training pipeline mission at the 344 TRS. And that enlisted training pipeline mission involves aircraft loadmasters like Airman First Class Jacob Monday. People on the ground can't get their supplies without Air Mobility Command. So we're a part of that. We're a big function in that. Um, so we get the troops, whatever they need, whether that's you know food, whether that's weapons, anything like that. The common theme across the training at this schoolhouse, safety. So in, in this type of environment, we're trying to provide that meaningful but beneficial approach of what the importance of loading this cargo means, not only 
loading it in a timely manner, but also in a uh, efficient and uh, within regards to safety. And not only is the Air Force's Center of Excellence responsible for training students to efficiently transport cargo, but also provide in-flight comfort to passengers, distinguished visitors traveling all over the world. So we are training future flight attendants who will be going off to fly with our nation's top leaders, flying anywhere and everywhere. Air Force flight attendants undergo three different blocks of training, aircraft orientation, food prep, and presentation. Brace, brace, brace. Stay seated, stay seated. And then our last block is emergency procedures where they learn to egress an aircraft. It's a 25 day course, so it goes by fast. We throw a lot of information out at them, uh, but they handle it well. Attention to detail is paramount at the Career Enlisted Aviator Center of Excellence. Reporting front and center, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. You want to get your phones out and scan the QR code right there on your screen. It's going to take you to our website. And there you're going to find a lot of military-based stories. They are all on our website, ksat.com. And we have more people up and out on the roadways. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Yep, I was just scanning the QR code. That's great stories from Jonathan Cotto and Stephen Chavez. Uh, but let's get a look right now at our roadways. Things look like they are turning out to be quite nice, actually, as we start a new work week. Not finding any issues out there on the roadway, but as Steph was mentioning, more folks are getting up early and getting their day started. So just take a look at that map because what you're seeing more than anything are those active construction spots and, of course, those pesky stalls. So as a reminder, you got to check those vehicles before you get out on the roadway because we start to see a number of those stalls pop up as the morning does get moving. But right now, if you're going to be moving down to US 90 over uh, near Bear County, metal bar guard beam installation is taking place. Keep in mind, this did start today, should be wrapping up on Friday, July 1st. That's from 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. During that time, drivers, you can expect a single main lane closure in both directions right there at Montgomery Road. So keep that in mind. Crews will be getting out there in just a gif. So give them some room and make sure you give yourself plenty of time. The morning is just getting going, Mike Osterhage. Thank you, sir. And what's kind of uh, was getting going and now sort of dying down are these uh, showers out here to the east. A couple of them right around Gonzales, but this has definitely been been diminishing and and dying off in the past couple of hours. It looked a lot more promising earlier this morning. Now all is not lost, though. This is just a an indication that the atmosphere is now ripe for more showers and thunderstorms to develop. So we've got a front which is lying across the area. We have a break in the action this morning, but with that disturbance lying across here, that's going to help to fire up more showers and thunderstorms later on this afternoon. They're just going to be kind of scattered around and again. Overall this week, this is not going to be a drought buster and it won't be raining constantly. It's just going to be scattered in nature. Most folks, let's call it a half an inch on average. Obviously, there's going to be in some cases more rain than that. A couple of heavier downpours here and there, but that's going to be sort of uh, the average. Rain's going to continue on through the evening hours, scattered about here and there. A couple of thunderstorms again, and then it's going to start to die down somewhat in the overnight hours and will refire tomorrow afternoon. More of these showers, a couple of thunderstorms scattered about the area. 40% chance of rain today. I'm going 40% chance of rain tomorrow. Then things do start to sort of um, tail off a little bit in the middle part of the week. We'll still have a few leftover showers around here, but it's not going to be quite as much. Today, we make it up through the 80s. Temperature profile this morning is going to be about what we've seen the past couple of, uh, well, months it almost seems like here with the hot temperatures 90 at noon and then we will though have more clouds later on this afternoon it is going to be hot we are going to be up to 97 degrees right around three four o'clock this afternoon and then temperatures will start to drop down we'll also start to see some of those showers and thunderstorms then developing around here again who's going to see how much rain lesser amounts off to the west greater amounts off to the east and this is through friday evening so we've got the front, which is lying across the area today, tomorrow. That's what's going to produce some of the rain. And then later on in the week, we've got a disturbance which is coming on in here from the Gulf of Mexico. That's the high that has been plaguing us and keeping us so hot. It has finally worked its way off to the west. Then we have this low developing here in the Gulf. And what that's going to do is work its way up to the north. Now, as of right now, it stays a little further to the east of San Antonio. So our eastern counties are going to be getting sort of the lion's share of rain. We'll maybe see a couple of wraparound showers, but we're going to watch the uh, progress of that very closely. It moves a little further to the west. More folks get more rain. That would be later on in the week. Today, 90 at noon, 
maybe a shower trying to develop around here and then better chances of rain developing later on today. Still 97 degrees hot and humid today and then temperatures drop off by dinner time or start to drop off only only. Can I say that again? Only 90 tomorrow. 90, only low 90 Yay. through Thursday. I know. Strike say that one more time, Mike. Just, one. just so we can 94 hear you. on Friday. Uh, uh, hot weekend to start off the month of July. Long holiday weekend for the fourth on Monday. Um, and we'll have rain chances, lesser chances toward the end of the week. But we'll watch that low coming in here out of the Gulf for Thursday and Friday. What's the high tomorrow? 90. Only. Yay. 90. <laughs> we thank you for taking us back to the 90s. Just, we love it. Wow. I, I wish I could take credit for it. So, <laughs> 651 and 76 Just degrees in cash. Yes. <laughs> well, they call it the ism nobody is talking about. No matter what race or gender you are, you could become a victim of it. Tomorrow on GMSA, we are talking about ageism at work. All right. While we wait for that 90 tomorrow, only 90 tomorrow. It will Yay. be a little warmer today, but that's okay. It's a beautiful looking sunrise. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 654. Some kids having vacations, others maybe at summer camp, but some are already back at school. So classes are not in session yet. However, some students at Madison High School are already back on campus, spending their summer days raising livestock. Uh, it's part of the AgriScience Magnet Program. Today on GMSA at 9, Tiffany Huertas is going to give us a closer look at the program and what students are responsible for doing all summer with their animals. Yeah, should be interesting. For now, 655, let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. A lot of work in early mornings, but we know a lot of folks are going to be getting up this early to head out. Let's take a quick look around town, see what you can expect. 16 for Petrenko. The morning has been off to a tranquil start, but keep in mind, although we are seeing some scenic views here on Transguide, we are still finding some issues that remain there on the map. You can see just a bunch of stalls still around that location. Our, our map there, uh, also some active construction spots, and we're going to continue to update that on throughout the day. But back here at Transguide, things moving just fine, Mike. Thank you, sir. There's our dirty camera lens, but you can see we do have a few clouds off to the east. Sun is coming up over the horizon. We have those few showers well off to the east. They've pretty much all died down. 78 degrees right now, but more rain is going to be developing later on today. 90 at noon, a shower, and then 95 for a high temperature later on this afternoon. And the nice thing is temperatures are only going to be in the low 90s pretty much the rest of the week. 94 on Friday. Rain chances, better chances today, tomorrow, and then sort of tapering off a little bit, but watch a system coming out of the Gulf. So good looking end to June. Very good. Finally. No complaints from us. No kidding. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. We're going to see you back here at nine for GMSA at nine. In the meantime, good morning, America.